So I'm pretty sure that nobody in my family is going to ask me, so mom, why'd you just get up in the middle of Thanksgiving dinner and leave without saying anything to anybody? So I'm gonna tell you. Why? Because I think you'll understand. That's why. I was sitting there letting my turkey digest and I just, I had this realization that I was completely fucking miserable. That I didn't think I could stand it another minute. That I felt like my head was going to explode. I was listening to the inane conversation and the same questions by people who just walked in the room and I was watching my in-laws talk to my oldest son and ignore my youngest son like they always do. And I was listening to my husband say stupid shit that he didn't even mean and then refused to answer my questions when I would question him on something. Like I would say, well, why, do you, why do you think that? Because he would say something that sounded like a fact, but I was trying to figure out what he was basing it on. He was saying something about the... My son just bought a house. And he was saying something about the neighborhood. And I, I said, well, what are you basing that on? Do you, have, you know, if, oh, the price of the house. So that seems like a lot. And I was like, when's the last time you looked at house prices in Renton? I mean, you know, we've owned our house a long time. Things have changed. But, you know... I learned early on in, you know, in our marriage not to ask those kinds of questions because they would send him into a rage. And nobody asked those kinds of questions. And so nobody really ended up talking about anything. And he's not the only person in his family that does that. Now, I'm not trying to blame him because I turned into an asshole because I didn't know how to just stand up for myself. And I didn't know how to just be myself. And the reason I didn't is because I didn't, I didn't know what myself was. Because I didn't grow up with the ability to develop a self. It's just that simple. I was, I had to do and say what I was told, you know? And I was scared a lot of the time, if not all the time. And I was terrorized by violent, you know, domestic violence and the threat of violence. And we moved all the time. My sister and brother went into foster care, left me at home, it, you know. You know, it was confusing, chaotic. Nobody was in charge. And when my niece was born, when I was 13, my sister was unmarried and she lived with us and I just decided I wasn't going to let that happen to that girl. And in that moment, I guess, what was inside of me came out and that's what was supposed to happen because it's kept me more or less on the straight and narrow my whole life. You know, more or less. I'm straight and I've fallen. But I kept getting up and getting back on the road that led to that true, true north of being who I wished I'd had as a kid. And I don't know where that came from because I didn't put that thought in my head. I didn't put that objective in my in my path. It just came out of me. To me, that says that that's a blessing, that that's a gift, that that's, you know, whatever is divine. I don't know what it is, but whatever divinity is, that that's, that's my piece of divinity that I was meant to bring into the world. And that's just the way I look at it. Just no, you know, nobody else has to feel like that, that way. I, I've studied all the major religions now, and I love them all. That's just the honest God truth, just like I love all people. I just literally do. I just can't figure out what everybody is getting so excited about. <laughs> I mean, it's fucking stupid. When you have one band that can play in every country, to every language, we need to get over ourselves. There's no way that could be that could happen if we weren't a lot better than we try to act like we are. We are obviously pretty fucking cool. We're just the same. Really, come on. Come on. I don't know where the camera on my phone is because I'm an idiot, but come on. Really, come on. We're no better than this. We watched Mr. Rogers. <laughs> okay? If you watch Little House on the Prairie, I know you know better than this. Come on. <laughs> I mean, Sesame Street? Hello? I kid love Little Bear. Oh, my God. Jeez, parents were so nice. I loved Mr. and Mrs. Little Bear. <laughs> Mom and Bob, they were so good. I loved them. I loved them. And I'm horrified by this world we're creating, and I know I'm not alone. I love Thanksgiving dinner because I am tired of being unhappy, because when I'm unhappy, I am no good to myself or anybody else. When 
I am unhappy, I am an asshole. And I don't see and I don't care about anybody else's pain. That's what I remember. And I've been an asshole more often than I haven't been. But having recently discovered how good it feels to not be an asshole, I'm not going back. I can't go back. I will die. Just like my parents. Just like my oldest sister, I'll die. And then my kids will be shattered. And then my gift will be un ungiven. Not acceptable. And I know that. And I, I know there are other people who must know that. Because I don't know why I know that, but I know I do. And that means that that's information that's available. And there's a lot of other information that's available, and it's all on the internet and on YouTube, and that's how I found it, and that's how I stopped being an asshole, so it's not hard. And I could write a book and tell you how I did it, and maybe I will if it's, you know, good, but... I mean, I'd rather just tell people, you know, it's possible. You can do it. You can get your self-respect back. That's all you need. You just need to remember that you're somebody. You need to stop laughing when it isn't funny, and you need to stop scratching when it doesn't itch, and you need to become somebody, and then you will know what you're meant to do. Or maybe before that you'll know. Because the way that I made the change in my life was I just started honoring what felt right to me even when it was really hard, and it was. Even when I had to say uncomfortable things, and I still do every day. Even when I had to walk away from dinner parties because I, I asked, you know, twice actually for the conversation to be changed. I, I, when my youngest son was in the bathroom, I pointed it out as if I hadn't said anything. And at the last, the last time we all got together, I said something about it also. Really nicely. I didn't say anything rude. I just said, maybe when Lincoln comes out of the bathroom, we could talk to him because we haven't. And we don't. And it's, I don't know if anybody else has noticed, but I don't think it's a good thing. And they all said different things that didn't connect. And my husband sat there and stared at me like I was crazy. I didn't look at him though. He was sitting next to me and he just stared at me and I didn't look at him. And then I asked again. Well, I texted my son and I said, they may be clueless, but you know this shit ain't right. And I sent him a picture. I took a picture of him, obviously, holding forth and my youngest son sleeping. You know? And we're all doing this kind of thing. Not because we're bad, but just because we're fucking clueless, that's all. We're just clueless. We need to stop beating up on each other. We're just clueless. Except our kids. Our kids might not be clueless, and that might be why they're so mad at us. Because they're obviously mad, and we obviously did some shit to deserve that, and, you know? Black people are obviously mad, and we did some shit to deserve that. And, you know, the list goes on and on and on. We have some shit. I'm not just saying white people, I'm just saying people. That's the thing. Everybody's hurt somebody, everybody's betrayed somebody, everybody's talked shit, everybody's judged, everybody has been racist. Hello? I'm saying it. We are all prejudice against everybody else because we only know our, only exper our own experience. Period. Hard stop. Non-negotiable. You only know your relative space and time experience of the world. That's it. And if we didn't keep killing people who tried to drink, bring this to our attention, we are all one and we sink or swim together. So... I'm at 8614 9th Avenue, Southwest Seattle, Washington. If somebody wants to bomb my house or shoot me, we need to wake up. We need to work together. Or we are going to be asked to leave. We're not special. We're not sacred. We're not sanctified. We are subject to the laws of the universe, the laws that guide life, that determine life, that decide life, that decides. There are rules. 